uh, <laughs> I will briefly talking about talk about the term uh, which are not similar to my to my main topics. Okay, uh, who am I? That's that's the question because somebody knows that I'm the head of new media studies department. Somebody knows that I'm. Uh, the managing director and the Taxo Interactive, uh, but uh, that's me in the right <laughs> up uh, uh, 20 years ago, the one year before I finished my high school and goes to university and go to university. The problem is that uh, my primary university was, um, and uh, I know that's a little bit unbelievable, but that was the theater academy. <laughs> and I four years studied uh, a director's uh, topics and how to analyze text and literary theory. This was my background, not information science. Okay, my years with art. That's me after this. Uh, the main topics on uh, Janáčková Academy of Muzických uh, umění in Brno was how to analyze text. We provide the elements of text, like the just to read, read words, try to find motifs, try to name terms, terms of text, and what is most important, just be focused on time and, sp uh, sorry, time and space in text. The literary theory was one of the brick of my education. The second was theory of science. I'm was so happy that my lecture was uh, Ivo Ososobi, the famous Czech semiotics, semioticans, semiotic, uh, which uh, learned me about learned me about the theory of science, and there is the most important triads in semiotics, triad in semiotics, syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. And after this, it seems that. I was semantic guy before it was cool because the interpretation of art is always the semantic stuff <laughs> and there is always the pragmatics part because you need to understand what the text means but you need to know what you would like to say to other people. <laughs> that means I think that I was semantic guy always. Mm, in reality, okay. Uh, after many years, I started study a PhD in information science and found this this great uh, sentence for uh, from Phil Carlton, and uh, I think that this is the same like in literary theory, because like as in it and as in literary theory in computer science are only two hard things: cache invalidation, that means the space and space and time, and the second naming of things. That means you need to find the right theme, right motif in text, and name it. The problem is the same. And in the end, I think that Faculty of Arts is the best way how to start learn the semantic stuff in computer science. And now two small, uh, two small case before lunch, because lunch is here, is downstairs. The one, the first case is a system which name was Trixam. The father of Trixam is here with us, the Michael Ehrlich is there. Trixam was, actually I think the was, um, affiliate system, something like PPC, a PPC system, which Michael uh, programmed for Cessna in eight years ago. I think eight, eight, eight years ago. And Ataxo was uh, the part of this team and we uh, start uh, with some changes for our new client. That was the Allegro. The Polish friends know who is Allegro. Uh, Allegro in uh, Poland has the same position like the Cessna in Czech Republic. There is, I think, the 100 million page views, page views by mouth. It's in top three, 200 pages in the world regard to Alexa rank. And Allegro ordered the affiliate system for they uh, partners. That means everybody was, and actually is still in, is, is still is running the system, was able to push a small piece of code to their page and cache Allegro by the transaction which was done through this this auction model. Uh, 
There was an interesting problem, how to find the interesting keywords, that's classic problems in text mining, but the second problem was how to suggest any keywords for the serves the ads, because uh, a many pages was built like link biting pages with uh, repeating, repeating the same words in many, many variations. And uh, this was a problem because uh, the, um, uh, the b because the first analyzer of Tricksum was better for the classic text, not for the small amount of text with, uh, with uh, uh, a permanent repetition. Okay, the five years ago we start with the build our private same semantic analyzer. The idea was uh, really simple. The, okay, the text is a system. Uh, which, which is connected, the system of nodes connected by the, uh, connected by the terms, uh, sorry, by the terms which belong to the same terms. Yeah, I think that's a really simple idea. The correct or right identification of topics is you need to find the a higher common term for the uh, much, much as possible terms in the text. It's again, it's like the motif and terms in literature. And what is the best is find the not most common because most common words in the world are be or got, but try to serve the ads for the words like be or got. And you need to find something which is named as second stage of abstraction in general semantics theory. Uh, we catch the whole Wikipedia content, parse it to system of category, parse it to the name entity, uh, small pieces, build our own lemmatizer, a lemati a tool for lemmatization, because five years ago there was a horrible situation uh, in open source, open source space. Uh, uh, we use um, a drastic mechanical way for lemmatization like the generate all possible forms of Czech words from iSpell or every Polish words from iSpell. And then we built a system which was able to serve in real time uh, 800 requests per second for analyzing the one, t uh, for analyzing text, analyzer's text, analyzing text. Sorry for my English. <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> the results was, I think, good for us. It's mean, this is the article from New York Times. Uh, we built this analyzer for the uh, English, for the Polish, for the Czech, and probably for every language which is, uh, which is possible to catch from Wikipedia. Yeah. This was text about the iron, uh, about the opening the nuclear power planet uh, in the iron. The system was able to find these categories, the energy, nuclear technology, internal relations, chemistry in countries. And it then defined uh, the main keywords like Russia, iron, uranium, nuclear power, nuclear power plant, fuel, and years. What was great was that if you don't find any uh, keywords which you have in, in a, a database, try to push uh, the other keywords from the same hierarchy in the Wikipedia. That's when we was able to serve ads for non-existing keywords on the page. Yeah. Uh, five years ago, I think that was great. <laughs> but <laughs> then I find uh, some studies from the guys from Waikato, from New Zealand, uh, like in Wikify Miner, and find that there is a big a semantic web community which experimented with something like this with Wikipedia like, uh, like we experimented. And that was, that was for me a new point of view, uh, which is able to stay uh, in opposite to the st classical statistical and probabilist probabilistic methodology. Okay, the second, second case. Uh, now we are working on project which is name is dameprace.cz. Uh, in the effect is, we can try to find a way how to improve matching uh, between the job ads and job um, between the job seekers and job offers. In this project, uh, 
we start build the ontology and control vocabulary for this. That work was done with together with our partner in Derry and in uh, Tilburg. Uh, but what uh, was interesting question? Okay, how to build, how to make the, the basic analyze of the corpus text? In the traditional way, it's the same like in the literary theory. You need to just read the texts and build something like qualitative uh, metrics, qualitative code schema, like the classic qualitative analysis, and try to name it with a small amount of names, much as possible big area. And, but the problem is that there is no way how to take, uh, don't, there is no a, a quick way how to make a, a quick overview for a whole text for to confirm your intuition from qualitative uh, analysis. And that was the point we built a short, uh, uh, sorry, a small application, uh, which is name is Corpus Viewer, <laughs> but I think this is not name, that's what the application is doing. And published this uh, code on, uh, sorry, yeah, that's, that's, uh, published this uh, on like the guest on 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 uh, webs. What this application is doing and why it's useful? It's completely built top on air R. That's for you, Benjamin. It's powered by Shiny Apps. That's application which allows to run uh, R code like the web server. That's fine things because probably you know that R code uh, is so short because there is a many libraries for the running for the for the uh, many kinds of analysis uh, everything you what you need is run the shiny web server and build your in effect model there's the whole application is still i think the more a little bit than 100 lines of code and the second is uh, the template in HTML. Yeah. Uh, the Shiny is uh, combining together the Node.js uh, and WebSockets communication between the page and between the uh, R uh, code, R server in behind of this. Uh, and through this, you can upload. Uh, ah, sorry, this is the corpus about the Václav Klaus speeches. It's interesting too, but I think it's special for Czechs, Czech people. Uh, yeah, this is finally Oplus. What you can do is this: is okay. For in the fact, you can start with a me uh, with uh, explore the engrams which is incorporated in the corpus, in generally, and uh, special for a word which you are which you can search. This means there is a práce work, and you can specify. Okay, I would like to take the three grams or two grams for this, and immediately is recounting. And you can see that for the práce, is práce v oboru, vyučení v oboru, práce na PC, the three most important three grams in the whole corpus is dominating the práce na PC. Uh, what's interesting, that everything this is done only by this piece of code. That means it's, uh, everybody is able to make some changes for this. The second point, you can use the correlation metrics for uh, how to find the words which are positively correlate, correlate, correlate with words which uh, uh, with, with word a práce. You can dynamically change uh, the number of word, words in the metrics and in the small corpus there is a 100 uh, ads 
the job offers in this moment, it's practically immediately. Yeah. You can uh, change the, the sparse in metrics, that's been sparsing unusual words, which is content only in, prop in, uh, in uh, extra uh, sentences or extra, extra documents. We provide also a multidimensional scaling. This means it's transform correlation metrics transform to the maps. Uh, oh, there is uh, more than 15. Okay. And you can see immediately the map and you can try to dimension of how do people use these words together. I mean, is there something dimension that's typical to use the word penise in this uh, dimension of the how to evaluate your work or condition for the start of work, etc. That's what provides a classic factor analysis. Person personally, I don't love factor analysis because it's high mathematics from my point of view. But again, you can try to find the factors, the, the, the clusters in the fact, the word together, which are represent some, uh, some dimension of the text, uh, of the corpus, and how many part of corpus, uh, of corpus is uh, represented by, by this, these factors. Again, the, the code which are doing this, that's all. There's nothing more because you can use the full power of uh, the R libraries. And everybody loves the graphs. You can use something clustering then the gram like for the clusters to together, the similar words or words with correlating together and against. You can see uh, how it will be dynamically changes. If you change this nullost, this immediately is recounting. Yeah. This small tools were, was used for evaluate the intuition which we have from the qualitative analysis of in the f in the start uh, I think there was in Drich there was a 100 ads from Craigslist because we start in, in, uh, in uh, English and then we evaluate this on this corpus. This corpus is small. If you want to start with analysis of job offers, you can start on the Ministers for Praca Sociální Kvěcí. There is a XML file with more than one, uh, with 10,000 job ads in this moment. And uh, what's the weakness of this? I think that the biggest problem is connected to the Czech language because Czech is a small language. There is no, uh, there is uh, only a lot of, uh, a lot of problem. One is how to le lemmatize and stem, stem the text because uh, R not support Czech language for this. Now we are working on this problem. Probably the way is. Uh, misuse the Lucene index uh, for the and so the API for the lemmatize or st uh, and stemming the check text. If it will be done, I hope so. That will be next week. That the concept of proof is okay in this moment. Uh, then will be possible to use every kinds of uh, tokenization analyzers and um, uh, tokenization analyzers and Michael, help me. The three point and filters uh, for for the works with corpus viewer and probably we connect this corpus viewer directly to the elastic search. This will be possible to use the full text searching and logic operator for the operate with this. Yeah, and this is probably the biggest weakness. The problem is of course uh, with uh, a performance of <laughs> error because. Uh, now is uh, supporting a multi-core. It's a little bit better than before, but still the shiny apps. It's uh, in one thread blocking mode. Uh, but we prepared the six months ago application before. Who? 
yeah, six months ago, application uh, for dynamic researching uh, of the vocabulary on our former Czech president. Uh, maybe I show you. Give me a second, please. It was small application for uh, hospodářské noviny, which can allow to explore uh, near to 500 public speeches by Václav Klaus uh, through the time. It was directly connected to the Elasticsearch, and you can f full texting, uh, full searching in full. Te you can search in full text for the terms, and you can see the trends in the public speeches for, for the words. And because there was a problem with maintenance, uh, sorry, for uh, with performance, we start with um, a three servers and dynamic load balancer on Amazon infrastructure. And it seems that there is possible to uh, thousands more, near to 100,000 people was use this application to use this application through one day. That means the way how to solve the problem with performance is use a more servers with load balancer in the front end. And for some, some application, I think that's okay. Okay, that was a two use case from my point of view. Uh, how we are using the, some part of semantic web technology uh, in our products or in our planning products. In the end, after all, I think that the, the statistics method and machine learning and semantic webs are a perfect couple. <laughs> and I'm so happy that the tools like the Corpus Uber are able to help build the additional ontologies. Okay, thank you for uh, your attention.